a golden age for the Queen, because it's the first time in her life that she hasn't been overshadowed by another woman. There was either her mother or Princess Margaret, or at one time Margaret Thatcher, whom people actually thought was the Queen, at least small children did. <laughs> Here she stands alone, and her hand has never been steadier on the tiller. And I think uh, people point. were saying mm. it was the end of an era when the Queen Mother died. It was the end of that era. But I think now it is the beginning of a golden age for her. What type of woman is she then? She's a multifaceted woman, actually. We only see one side of her. But she's really very humorous. She's great fun. She's very giggly. She's very young at heart. I mean, there aren't many women of 76 who were still saying, oh, mummy, you haven't bought another dress. You know, <laughs> very natural woman. A great lover of animals, has a great empathy with animals. Her relationship with dogs and horses is, is really quite remarkable. She's a born handler. At the same time, she can go out there with all the full regalia. And she's a, an icon for the world yeah. of, of a, a woman, which makes one very proud to be another woman. And of dignity and of never having put a foot wrong in her life. Have you had an opportunity to sit down and have a really confidential chat with her? I have walked through the gardens of Windsor Castle with her. And we have sat and talked as well. But I remember particularly walking through Windsor Castle and we were talking about children and the weather. And I felt, you know, here, here are my two sort of middle class housewives chatting and suddenly thinking, oh my God, no, this is the Queen. Mm. And one can forget. Mm. But one must never forget. There's always that. Mm. That sort of one line one shouldn't cross. Yes, yes. Oh. I think the, the 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 point about the Queen's golden age is probably opposite. But at the same time, the royal family are never as formidable as when they are a family. And you've seen that this year with the the funerals for the Queen Mother, Princess Margaret, and obviously with the uh, Golden Jubilee ce celebrations. But what I think is interesting for the future is that Prince Charles is now taking on more of a role. And you've seen that with the opening of the new Queen's Gallery uh, at Buckingham Palace. And in a way, the royal family have learnt that they've got to sell themselves. They can't just sit on their laurels anymore. They've got to be more in tune with what people are saying. And in, in many respects, they've shown a degree of humility as an institution, which very few other institutions, in e either the government or in uh, private industry, ever show. And the Queen said, we've got to change, we've got to move on. And I think you're going to see that Charles is different to his mother in the, in the sense that he will be far more commercial in, his, in the way that he uses the monarchy and the way that he, you'll see that the royal family now will put a lot more emphasis on the fact that they are giving value for money to the nation and that the Queen's Gallery they've made a lot of play of the fact that they haven't taken any lottery money for it, that uh, mm. all the money's been raised through Buckingham Palace. And you may see in, in the coming years that, say, the Royal Collection, that, that these magnificent, you know, Van Dykes and uh, the uh, Nala da Vinci's and so on, there'll be more Royal Collection pavilions, mm. galleries, throughout the country. With all the traumas and, and scandals that have been in the last 10 years, say, would, do you think that's the biggest lesson they've learned, to, to change with the times now, to um, yeah, I mean, be I mean, more publicly I, I, minded? I, I really feel that on the death of Diana, if somebody, if, say, Earl Spencer, after he'd made his fu uh, funeral oration, had got up and said, we must end the monarchy, and rallied the crowds, rallied the mob, they could, we could no longer have a monarchy, because feelings were running very high there. People now call, refer it as, to it as floral fascism, but nonetheless, the royal family were genuinely shaken by what happened. I mean, they were obviously grieving the death of Diana, but at the same time, they were being criticised for that. And uh, that they realised that they had to make some changes, and they have done. And that they are far... Uh, the, the, you know, the humility that they show now as an institution is in grave uh, stark contrast to when I was doing it 15 years ago. On royal tours now, for example, a, a press officer who used to be, used to call the abominable no men because they would just treat you with utter contempt, they will James now never call, ask, though, yeah? ask, them, ask them a question. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll now come back with an answer, surprisingly enough. So that's that's an indication yeah. of the change. I did a tour the other day. I did the beginning of the Queen's tour, the first tour. Couldn't believe the level of cooperation yeah. on it. it. They have altered. I'm not sure that the principal. I'm not sure I totally agree with Andrew. I think the principles have altered to a degree, but I think they've been forced into it. I think the Queen is very astute, and she will continue going in one direction as long as she thinks it's OK. But they cannot rule without popular approval, and I think they will alter, but I don't think they do it willingly. I mean, look at the, the latest thing about the Queen Mother, and there's going to be no death duty on that estate. A lot of people think that's incredibly wrong. That's a very old story. That was sorted out 
uh, several years 93, ago. 93, yeah, it, it was a deal with John Major. Yeah, so, I think um, it's correct, too. I think you do. Ne they do need to keep their fortune together, otherwise they start having to sell bits off. that rule off, applies to everybody, And then they have to go to yes. Parliament eventually, well, I, I and it's I think it hopeless. would be helpful if the media mm. concentrated not so much on saying the royal family should pay inheritance tax, is that none of us should. Huh. Well, the well, point is that... I, they, 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 well, no, I agree with that. Well, yeah. the, the, the yes. We pay tax on it all well, our lives. Exactly. Again, on yes. death. None yes. of us should pay it. No. That's where I the energy should be going. Entirely. But the rule anyway at the moment is that if you make your will over to somebody else before seven years before you die, well, yes. you you've escaped so, anyway. Yeah. So it's not a, a royal um, privilege, that. That's something that so we can all we have. have but I would like to see... I would like to see more definition in their rule. You say, Andrew, that they're going to... Charles will become more commercial and he's doing it already by opening the Queen's gallery I don't see that as a particular definition I like the royal family I'm not saying I'm a Republican I'm not but I would like to see a stronger role I'd like to see them actually out there properly wagging the flag for all of us not behind closed doors and well, interviewing ambassadors which I know is an important thing yeah, but I'd like to see right. them really doing it and talking openly about mm. it and being much more like one of Diana us. was and, yes and <laughs> stopping all this there, I realise there has to be a certain level of protocol and I agree that the Queen should be treated with enormous respect and all the protocol that goes with bowing and you know, walking in and out backwards, whatever She doesn't it is. expect that, you know. Don't think she does, really. Well, it's there. Put it well, that it's way. there. The but presence Charles is there, and it's up to you whether you do it. I think, really, that the the essential principle that should guide them for the next fifty years is that they should represent the nation as we are and as we want to be, not as the, the nation that we used to be. So that uh, Buckingham Palace, for example, they should employ more. Uh, ethnic minorities. They should. They should not. So, in the private office now, you don't get. There's no Jews. Or, uh, there's no Catholics. Or, um, it's mainly a Protestant, white, uh, upper class, landowning, land, land mm. and very few and very few ethnic mm. minorities. And really, mm. Buckingham Palace, the monarchy, should symbolise us as a nation, mm. not as as. Uh, as, as, as they should symbolise society with a small s, not society with a capital yeah. S. Well, we know not, that Prince the... Charles does an enormous amount for society with his uh, Prince's Trust, yes. but we don't see enough of that either. And it's all dressed up as rather sort of do-goody and royal. And, oh, gosh, what do you the mean Prince we don't see enough me. in terms of his role within the Trust? Or... His role, exactly what's going on around the country, who's benefiting, how are they working it out? Uh, we don't see enough I, of the good that do, they do. Right? I, I mean, think you do, you know. I think on a local level you do. Yeah, because it's actually working extremely well, and therefore it's not written as a story at a national level. Mm -hmm. But I think you'll find well, the concert in the park within the local places around the country. It actually gets a lot of wide coverage. I think it's the biggest charity raising money there is in the whole of the UK. Yeah, I'm sure there is, but it's not <coughs> a high enough profile. And I only because it's but, working so well. If it started you... going wrong, then it would come into the public eye. It's like the Queen's tours. Nobody goes on them. I remember the Queen complaining once. That even my own TV station hasn't gone. The BBC. The reason for that is that it all works so smoothly. It's only when there, there, there are muck-ups that go on that. People there they want, want to cover them. It, it's really up to the media, yeah. and there have been some recent documentaries which show what they all really do and how hard they work. I think we want more of those. I don't think they need to change so much as the fact that we need to show what they're doing to the public more. Mm. Yes, I agree with it that. It may not probably. be a story yes, or headline grabbing. But I'd like to see them uh, m m fronting things in a much larger way, in a much less stuffy way, in a much less royal way. You don't way. want to spoil Unimari the mystique, though. Well, well I, I think I they have, actually. You know, Una Mary, the important thing for you is that you are Camilla's cousin. By marriage. By marriage. We so. both married into the Parker family. So do you know her well? I don't, know. Have you ever no. met her? Oh, uh, years and her? years and years ago. Oh, so there's no, 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 we can't put the screws on you and find out what's <laughs> going on there, then? I think nothing much will happen more than has gone on already. I think they've achieved what they wanted to achieve, which was to be able to go about in public together without, you know, creating a sort of state of hysteria. She has no great desire to be queen and never has had. And she likes to be able to slip back to her own home and do her own things when he's touring. I do Andrew, think she's they, have the best of both wife, they have the best of both worlds. Andrew, now, what do you think on Camilla? I think that, that um, this is one of the greatest love matches that we've seen of since probably the Duke of Windsor and um, and uh, uh, Wallace Simpson. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I'd be perfectly happy if, if they got married. Um, as far as many people who still support Diana and uh, grieve over her loss, they still blame Charles uh, for the collapse of their marriage because uh, he was seeing Camilla throughout that, that period. And it would be the thorn in the side for the monarchy. 
if, I if, if she, if she, if she did marry, and and it would, uh, and it's the old thing: if you ain't broke, don't uh, mm. uh, don't fix it. it. So, so you we'll, do, we'll, they're going yeah. to get married. So so what, why why should they? But in, in many respects, see, Princess Anne has been you know the template for this. She's had a she's had a, a divorce. She's remarried, and she lives. Perfectly quietly, and and nobody. Uh, but she really she's not queen. close to the throne. No. She's quite close queen. to the throne. She's the princess well, royal. She's, she's the highest ranking uh, uh, royal uh, woman in the land. And in, ma in many respects, one, two, three, um, as, six in line, as far yeah. as as far as Prince Charles is concerned, um, he has to work mm -hmm. out his relationship with the Church of England and also uh, be very cognizant of public opinion. Well, of course, we run out of time. But final word: Do you think they will get married? I think that in ten years' time you'll probably see... Uh, ten years? Yes. Yeah. Not before the Queen's dead. OK. I don't think right. in the near future, if ever. All right. Fair enough. Interesting. Thank you all very much. Um, it's uh, time for a quick break now, but before we go, are you a fan of the royal family? Do you think you know everything there is to know about the Windsors? Well, uh, we're in search of a royalist to go head-to-head -head with Mr James Whitaker. Yes, if you think you're up for it, <laughs> <laughs> like Rory Bremner seems to be at the weekend, then give us a call and we'll put you to the test. Head to head with James. It's going to be this Thursday. Yes, bring on Rory Bremner. Bring on, Why yeah. not? I'd love we it. Might yeah. him. <laughs> bring, <laughs> we might Sorry, that's page three of the mirror <laughs> for those who don't know what I'm talking about today. There's a number to call 0870 1101 101. That's 0870 1101 101. That's going to make good telly. When we come back, we'll be finding out if Will's. Well, likes is that new look, plus a chance to live like a royal yourself in our mini break giveaway. See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Now, as part of our royal special this week, we're giving you the chance to live like a royal. You could win a two-night break at 900-year-old Amberley Castle in West Sussex. Love. This includes a three-course dinner with wine and a full English breakfast as well. The prize is valid for a year and is based on two people sharing a room. And we're going to throw in £200 to cover your travel expenses too, a night in a castle. Oh, four little four poster there, look at Ooh, that. Mm. Why do we like four posters? Uh, There's something magic, isn't you it? You know, I used to hear every time I'd go on a film somewhere, that mm. the hotel would generally give you the best room in the house and so you'd always be in this four poster bed on your own it's a terrible waste all you've got to do is ask the following question no? yeah. what title this is a question for you what, what title? oh nice about the trunk emeralds. Yeah. Uh, emeralds today ruby no no yes. uh, yeah check out the drawer of diamonds <laughs> Not bad, is it? No, no. Anyway, welcome, John. What Thank have you, you done with our Prince William look We've like? basically funked him up. Oh, uh, oh. A... yes, please. <laughs> you want to, uh, we've got this. What he looked like before? Yeah. <laughs> da -da. And this is what he looks like 